My name is Joyce McRory. My husband's name is Tom McRory. We have been rescuing greyhounds now for over 30 years, um, and we've enjoyed every minute of it. We're closing in on our 3,200th placement. Uh, all greyhounds, from most of them from the track in, uh, in Tijuana. They run about once every fourth day, and they run for 30 seconds. The rest of their day, the rest of the day is they're in crates. They're turned out two or three times a day. Often they're taken up to the track for what they call schooling, and they you know, they'll run them on the straight, whatever. But that's their day. I mean, they're, they're the perfect breed of dogs for the racing industry to use because they're sprinters. At first, they were very suspicious. You know, this is maybe 15 years ago. They were extremely suspicious, and for for good reason. They had some things they really didn't want us to see, and so it was sort of a very mistrusting kind of a relationship. But gradually, we just kept going back, you know, <laughs> and they couldn't get rid of us. <laughs> All the ones that we get are done with their racing careers. You know, that that's a thing. And I think that I don't know that they... I know they're trying to be a no-kill track, and, and I think that that's, they, they're very close to that. The manager of the old manager of that track said to Tom, how long does it take you to get these racing machines and turn them into pets? And Tom said, somewhere between here and the border. So how's your wife? My wife's okay. She's there still, man. She's doing it. <laughs> yeah. How many dogs has been working on? 20, 21. 21? 21 for you. In terms of them being hurt, we always take the broken dogs first. They come first. Um, I don't know what the percentage of the hurt dogs per se, because I think most of the hurt is, you know, the muscle pulls. There were a number of dogs here that had muscle pulls and stuff. I mean, if you're an athlete, that those things happen. I left you a message. I said there are no broken dogs. Okay. 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 All right. Take care, my friend. My friend, say hello to Joyce. I will. When we get down here to the border and you got good reception on your phone, okay. you're going to call Joyce and you're going to give her the information off of those. Okay. What she's going to want, what she's going to want is uh, <coughs> the dog's name, that's his racing name, and she's going to want those tattoo numbers, okay. and whether it's a male or a female. The only thing getting out of Tijuana is the streets are so narrow and the, the curves and stuff, but you know, he's done it for so many years, it's just nothing. Generally, it's when it's a new border guard who really wants to impress everybody. They put us in, a, in the secondary and they pull out the dogs and look at all the dogs and then shove them on. They never get through the trailer, I have to say. They'll throw a couple of dogs and go, oh, this isn't going anywhere, put them back in the trailer and we leave. And you're coming back, the, the trailer is barking. And until you get used to the fact that everybody's staring at you and you don't know why they're staring at you, and you stop like at a street light, but it's all the dogs, the whole trailer is barking the whole way. If I were them, I would, I would be so shocked. I don't know why they aren't. You, you know, I mean, when they're on a farm, it's it's a very structured environment that they have every day, pretty much the same. When at the track, they have this routine. And then you pull them out of their environment, shove them in a trailer, bring them across the border, and the next thing they see is all these Americans going, what? You know, I, and they jump out and wag their tails. I, <laughs> I don't get it. To be standing in there with all those people, you know, massaging them and rubbing them and cleaning your ears and doing all this thing. I, 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 if I were them, I, I think it was pretty cool myself. We check the eyes and we're looking for any abrasion or ulcers of the eyes that can happen while racing from dirt getting in their eyes. Then we check their teeth and what we're looking for isn't the tartar that you would normally suspect, but we're actually looking for red irritation along the gum lines. And Joyce right now is manipulating the dog's spine to check if there's any spinal injuries or irritations. Okay. Yep. Doesn't appear to be. We really have not had very much trouble with placing our dogs with cats and small animals. It, it,
So they get to lunge at the little dog and go, hmm, it smells like a dog. It's little, but it's the dog. And they get that out of their system. Then you bring them to the cat, and there's not that really bad reaction that you see if I brought the dog to the cat. Because I can tell you, at the beginning, we would have, I would say if we brought in 10 dogs, seven of them wouldn't be okay with the cat. Yeah, that's because we went to the cat first. There are bad things that happen in the racing industry. But on the other hand, meet these dogs at the track and you pull them in here. My observation is that if they were mistreated, they would be not so friendly. And I'm not pro-track at all. I'm not anti-track. I'm just sitting here observing that these dogs you know, they didn't look like they were beaten up to me, all 20 of them, and, and they weren't overly thin, and they were very friendly. It would be very nice um, if um, we could keep going until we weren't needed anymore, and that would be a, a wish of mine. Um, we certainly have attracted mostly younger people, certainly than I am, and uh, that's nice to see because they, ha they have the same interest. Um, the sad part about the racing industry declining or going away will be that this breed of dog will be gone. This is not, this dog is only bred for the racing industry. This breed of dog may become extinct, which would be a shame. It's a shame.